This episode of Ties That Help was brought to you by Lynda.com. What's up guys, in this video we're going to be taking a look at the new features in iOS 8. I'm going to be running through as many as I can here. Now remember there are over 200 features in iOS 8. There's a lot of little stuff, a lot of big stuff. Uh, so I can't cover everything, but I'm going to do my best to cover uh, most of the main stuff for you guys. So let's jump into it. Now at first glance you notice iOS 8 doesn't really look that much different from iOS 7. Uh, there really hasn't been much of a design change, it's more new features. I'll start out by double tapping the home button. Uh, when you do this now you get your contacts up here at the top, you've got your recents, if you scroll over to the left, you've got your favorites, and you can just tap on one of these, and you can call all of their numbers there. You can message them, FaceTime them. I do a FaceTime audio call, so that's nice to have that uh, right there when you double tap the home button. Now let's open up the Messages app to take a look at the new features in that. I'll go ahead and tap here, and you will see the new iOS 8 keyboard. And now what's really cool about this is Apple actually opened it up so developers can make their own keyboards uh, for iOS 8. So you'll be able to download these in the App Store and do things like Swift Key or, or stuff like that. I just have different keyboards on iOS 8. So That'll be nice if you don't like uh, the original iOS keyboard. Now this thing up here at the top, you'll notice looks a lot like Android. This is called Quick Type. Uh, basically when you're typing, or even if you're not typing, as you see right here, it says, hey, what's up? Uh, it's already suge uh, like suggesting words for me before I've even typed. Uh, and sometimes it'll actually go with what you're saying because it reads your text messages. So I'll go ahead and start uh, by saying, hey, what's, and it already knows that I want to say what, so I'll go ahead and tap that, and then I already know that I want to say up, so that's a, just a faster way of typing. That's pretty much what that does right there, is it suggests words to you based on how you talk, or how you text, rather, how you type, and uh, what uh, is, is going on in the conversation. Uh, so I think that's pretty cool and definitely useful. Now, a new feature in the Messages app is you can now record video or audio messages or pictures and send them directly in the app uh, using these buttons right here and right there. You'll notice there's a new microphone button right there. That was there before, uh, but there's actually a new gesture. The way it works is you actually tap and swipe up. If you swipe up, it'll take a picture. You can just release right there and that'll send. To record a quick video, you tap and swipe to the right and it's going to start recording. And then as soon as you release your finger, it's going to stop recording and it's going to uh, send it. You can just swipe right there and it'll do that. For an audio recording, it's pretty much the same thing. You just swipe up and then the longer you hold it, uh, the longer it's going to record. And as soon as you stop, it's going to stop and it's going to send that. If you do send a picture, video, or audio message that way though, uh, they will actually disappear after a little while or you can actually just tap on them uh, to save and keep it. I think it's pretty cool. They're trying to make it more like Snapchat and stuff like that. Uh, so it's nice to have that feature built right in uh, to the Messages app. You can still tap on these and like add a photo from your, your library or video or something like that still. Uh, that's just cool to have it right there. Your group messages are also a little bit better now. Uh, you can go ahead and tap right up there in the top right and you can actually uh, individually for each group message uh, turn it on do not disturb or you can actually tap to leave the conversation and if you keep scrolling down uh, you can scroll through and actually see uh, all the pictures and videos and everything shared in the group conversation and you can even set a subject so if I wanted to uh, set a subject for this one I would just say uh, fam because this is uh, my family right here so there we go and that's not what I typed that's awkward <laughs> I'm just gonna leave that. <laughs> Next up, we'll take a look at the new notification center in iOS 8. I just had some nice updates. Apple actually opened this up so the developers can make their own widgets for their apps uh, to show up in your notification center. And these are interactive, so you can like tap on them and interact with the app uh, right from the notification center now, which is gonna be nice. And if you tap this edit button right here, you can organize uh, like how all these widgets and stuff are gonna show up in your notification center uh, in the order you want. So it's nice to have some customization there. Notifications are also better now. So I'm gonna go ahead and send a text message here on this other phone and it should pop up any second here on my phone here so there it is now I can actually tap to swipe down and I can reply to a text message right from the notification which is really cool so it's basically a quick reply so I'll just say hey what's up uh, or if I wanted to I could actually tap uh, right up there at the top if you guys seen that where I can uh, send an audio message hey what's up I'm just doing an audio recording in iOS 8 and then do that and then hit send on that and yeah Pretty much quick reply uh, for your text messages uh, right there in the notification center. That also works for things like calendar alerts. You can go ahead and swipe down and accept it uh, or email or Facebook notifications. You can like a page or something like that from there. That's pretty cool. And you can now even quick reply to text messages and other notifications uh, right from your lock screen. You just swipe to the left like I did and then tap reply. And there you go. You can say, hey, what's up? 
and send it right there from your lock screen. Now it's really cool about iOS 8 if you have a lot of Apple devices is that everything backs up and syncs automatically to each other. Uh, they got a new thing called iCloud Drive. So pretty much what it does is it's a storage space in the cloud uh, for all of your files, whether it's a picture or a video uh, or a file on one of your apps or something like that. Uh, it's gonna back it up automatically to the cloud, uh, the iCloud Drive, save it there for you and you can access it on all of your devices. So let's say you took a picture or video on your iPhone, it's gonna be viewable uh, right from your iPad or right from your Mac, wherever it is, uh, all your files sync across all your devices and you can access them from anywhere. Another thing you can do is if you start typing a text message on your iPhone or an email on your iPhone and then you want to finish it on your Mac, uh, all your documents and everything like that uh, can be picked up right where you left off on another device. And now if you have an iPhone or iOS 8 and you get a call, uh, that call will also show up on your iPad or your Mac and you can actually answer it right there and talk to the person uh, without having to ever touch your phone uh, right from your other device. I thought that was pretty freaking awesome. Let's go check out the Photos app. It's got a couple new features. Uh, so if you actually tap the little search button right there, you can actually search through your photos. If I can tap it, uh, you can search through your photos by like location and stuff like that. Uh, so that's pretty cool being able to find photos more easily. Uh, you can also uh, do some new effects on your photos now. Uh, so if I go ahead and tap edit here, I can actually tap this button right there and I can change the light and color. So I'll go ahead and change the color first. Now what's cool is there's actually a little slider so you can see it change like as you move it. Uh, so you can change it all the way uh, to pretty much black and white or you can turn the colors like all the way up. You can pick wherever you want. Uh, you can stop anywhere in the slider. Then also you can do uh, the light like I said before. You can change the light like that. Uh, so I can make it more brighter or I can take out all the light and make it darker. I'll just say I want it about right uh, there. Now what's cool about the light and what's cool about the color too uh, is this changing like all kinds of stuff. With the light it's changing the brightness, the contrast, exposure and everything like all that at once. As you see these are all different levels. Uh, so that's pretty cool. It's doing all of your photo effects and stuff like that instantly just by dragging it back and forth uh, and definitely is a nice addition to make your photos look better. Another cool thing they did in the Photos app just like with the keyboards is Apple actually opened it up so the developers can make their own filters uh, that will actually be accessible uh, in the Photos app. Uh, so like you'll be able to download photo filters and stuff like that from the App Store and they will be able to show up uh, right here. So that's pretty cool. The email app also got some changes now. You can swipe to the right and mark an email as unread uh, or as read. And then if you swipe to the left, if this works, sometimes yeah, just like I did, I swipe too much to the right and I archived right there. If you just barely swipe to the left, sometimes it's hard to do that as you just seen. Uh, you can actually tap more right there and you can reply, forward, flag, uh, mark as unread, do all that stuff. I hit cancel there, swipe again a little bit, uh, no, 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 don't archive it. <laughs> swipe a little bit over and then you can flag or just tap the archive button right there or as I just showed you before, uh, you can just swipe all the way over to the left. Now let's take a look at the new health app in iOS 8. Now I can't really do much with this. What I'm pretty much gonna do is just show you around. I'll show you what it looks like. Uh, but what Apple's wanting to do with this app is make this your main go-to health and fitness app. So any other apps like that you have like uh, like Fitbit or Nike or anything like that that tracks health and fitness information, uh, pretty much what Apple wants you to do or what they want developers to do is set it up so that all that information uh, from all of your apps syncs up into this one app. So it's pretty much going to be your go-to place for all of your health and fitness stuff. Uh, so that's where it all sync up to. I think it's going to be pretty useful uh, if you actually use it uh, and if you actually use health and fitness apps. Uh, so let me know what you think about it, but as of right now, I can't really do much of this because there aren't really any apps updated to work with it. Another new feature in iOS 8 now is family sharing. Uh, so if you go into your iCloud settings, you can actually do it right here, set up family sharing. And pretty much what this lets you do is have up to six family members uh, sharing all of their uh, iTunes purchases, iBooks purchases, and App Store. That means all of your songs, your apps, your books, and everything like that are all going to be available uh, to all the people in your family, up to six people. Uh, so you can actually see all the stuff they downloaded here, browse through their purchases, uh, it gives you recommendations, stuff like that. It's pretty cool. Also, another really cool thing, if you're a parent and you have a kid who has an iPhone or iPod, or iPad or whatever, and they go and download apps and use your credit card all the time, well now you can have your credit card connected to theirs, but before they can download an app using this, you actually have to approve it on your device uh, before they can actually download it and charge it to your credit card. So right down the middle of your home screen, it reveals the Spotlight Search, uh, which has a few new changes in iOS 8. Uh, now it's also going to show you Wikipedia entries, uh, places nearby, trending news, and a lot more. So pretty much it's not just going to search throughout your phone, it'll also bring stuff up from the web. Uh, so let me actually show you how this works. So I'll go ahead and type X M E 
in, and there it is right there. So there's Wikipedia. That's bringing up the X-Men article right there. I can tap on it to view it. Uh, so it's not just searching your phone. You can also search uh, different types of stuff on the web with Spotlight now. It doesn't work as well or as fast as Google now. Uh, that's pretty much what they're wanting you to do with this is make it, when you're typing something in, it instantly pops up. Uh, no matter what you're searching, it's going to give you uh, related stuff to it uh, instantly. There's a ton of new features in iOS 8 that I couldn't get to in this video, but I covered some of the main ones. And the last one I'm going to show you is now Shazam uh, is built into Siri. So if I tap the home button and actually let it listen, uh, Siri will listen to a song for me and tell me what the song is. So let me show you this. And there it is. Look at that. Young and Beautiful by Lena Del Rey. And I can actually tap to buy it right there. So yeah, if you're listening to a song and you don't know what it is, you can tap and hold on your home button. I'll let Siri listen to it and it'll automatically uh, tell you what song that is. All right, guys, there you go. There's some of the new features in iOS 8. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure you subscribe to my channel right there. Uh, so you don't miss any of my future videos. I'll have more videos on iOS 8, the new iPhones when they come out, uh, lots of other stuff, Android phones, just, just tech stuff in general. I post whatever I want to to this channel. I just talking about tax so subscribe if you want to see more videos and I will see you guys in the next one. Peace. You can learn it at lynda.com, an online learning company with more than 77,000 video tutorials that teach you software, creative, and business skills. Membership started at $25 per month and provide unlimited 24-7 access to top quality video courses taught by expert instructors with real world experience. You can learn anywhere, anytime, and at your own pace. They got everything from bite sized tutorials to comprehensive courses in web design, programming, design, photography, business, audio and video, and 3D and animation. With new courses being added every week, their training library keeps pace with today's fast changing technical and software skills. You can even save and prioritize your courses in your queue for when you're ready to watch and you can track your progress in each. And you can even learn on the go with their optimized mobile site or their iPhone and iPad app for members. So if you want to check it out, just go to lynda.com slash tie and you'll get to check it out and try it for free for seven days. Again, that URL is lynda.com slash tie.